Ou palais de Rumine. <laughs> great. <laughs> Who entered in palais de Rumine? <laughs> okay, great. So you know part of my presentation. At least you know uh, what I'm talking about. As you know, uh, we will speak. As you know, we are in a, for the museums of Lausanne. We are in a phase of uh, transition because a new museum is built and will open uh, on October near the train station, Platform 10. Uh, it will be <coughs> the Museum of Arts on, of Lausanne and the Museum of Fine Arts, Musée Cantonal des Beaux-Arts, uh, Museum of Elysée and the Museum of Design will join there. In Palais de Rumine, uh, we have them for the moment Museum of Fine Arts, so it's also, it will also be a big change for us. So, uh, Palais de Rumine had many changes since it was built. And um, just to make you a, a, brief, histo a brief history of uh, this palais, uh, it opened in uh, 1906 and it was the result of a donation. It was a Russian prince, Gabriel de Rumine, who lived in Lausanne and gave to the city of Lausanne uh, 1.5 million, which was a, a huge amount at this time. It, it, uh, today, it, nowadays, it would be 15 million uh, um, a donation to, to build a building for education and for, uh, only for the public. So this uh, building was Palais de Rumine, it was built. It, it's the first building in uh, Lausanne who was made in beton. I don't know beton in English, I'm sorry. And um, from the beginning, it sheltered uh, libraries, uh, the, the, the Cantonal Museum, and this time there was only one. Now there are, there are eight museums because uh, collections have uh, grown and uh, science has also changed and specialized in different fields. But at the beginning, that was one cantonal museum with, with everything. Archaeology, uh, natural science, everything was together. University, laboratories and parliament. The, the parliament of Canton de Vaux was in Palais de Rumine during six or seven years because uh, the chateau uh, was renewed and then had a fire, so they had to stay by us uh, more time. <laughs> but now they, they are back in the, in the chateau. Uh, now we have uh, three cantonal museums in this building, archaeology and history, uh, geology and zoology. They, these three museums will remain in Palais de Rumine. The University Library, la BCU, which is a big, uh, a big actor because the, they have a lot of place, but they also have a lot of students and people who are coming, so it, it's an important part of the life of this building, the library. <laughs> and the Museum of Fine Arts is moving to Platform 10. Uh, about uh, 120,000 visitors per year. Uh, it's increasing every year, even, and we are very proud <laughs> because even the uh, last year, the Museum of Fine Arts was closed and we had the biggest amount of visitors. It, there is an exception in, um, in uh, 2017, it, there was a, an exhibition, Ai Weiwei, and uh, <laughs> it's, <laughs> okay, this, this happens once a century. <laughs> uh, some uh, numbers. So, uh, 
I made a mistake, I'm sorry, uh, when I gave the summary for this morning, I told that we have uh, between uh, 15 and 20 million objects. It's not true, we have only 5 million <laughs> in our collections. I'm very sorry. Okay, among these 5 million, there are about 1 million insects. So we have also very small collections. <laughs> As I told you, about 120 uh, thousand visitors, four permanent exhibitions, uh, two to three temporary exhibitions. It's, it's more than that because uh, it, it depends, but uh, the library is uh, more and more also making very small uh, temporary exhibitions about books or topics. Or, uh, so it's between three and ten more. It, and each year we have uh, more temporary exhibition. And we have one big shelter for our collections. In Luçon, it was the um, primary nuclear factory that had an accident as, Fukush at, as uh, Chernobyl. If you know it, the Swiss people uh, <laughs> among you knows this story. Uh, there was a, a small uh, uh, nuclear factory in Luçon, and uh, it has an accident because before the opening, so it never opened. And the accident was not, and not the, uh, the same consequences as Chernobyl, but it was the same problem as what occurs in Chernobyl and Fukushima. And uh, the, the reactor is completely closed, but all the... Um, the how do you say depot? All the, the rooms um, besides were open, so Canton Vaux decided that this will be our shelter for cultural goods. And uh, I guess that uh, four million of our objects are in Luçon. If you can visit it once, it's incredible. And not dangerous, because uh, there is no more radiation. <laughs> um, so, it's your turn to speak. <laughs> what, in your idea, what are the missions of museums towards objects, first of all? What are we doing? What is our mission? Yeah, objects? preservation. Why? Cultural heritage. Okay, yeah. Another idea? Mm -hmm. Showing? Showing, Showing yeah. Preserving the history. Mm -hmm. Research. Research, yes. Another idea? Okay. <coughs> So, it's to preserve uh, patrimonial objects of scientific or historical importance. Hmm? All right. We have to be a witness also of changes in history of the region. For example, uh, the Museum of Zoology. We have the all these collections of insects and animals, uh, local animals. So uh, the researcher in climate change or the, all the biologists, they can come to our collections to be sure, to, 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 we, to check if there was a change because uh, an event or a climate change or so on. Uh, usually all the natural history museums, we are the witnesses of how it was uh, 200 years ago. And we continue each year, we are making, uh, we are continuing our collections to be sure that we can say we have an historical, uh, uh, we are an historical witness about all these changes in the nature. It's the same for the botanic garden, plants and animals. And uh, we have the, because we are a cantonal museum, a public museum, we have the mission uh, to, to conserve 
important objects than received or related to the people of Canton de Vaud. So this is our mission, all the gifts that the Conseil d'État, that the government uh, receives, comes to our collections, for example. So we have uh, ethnographic, ethnographic collections uh, about the gifts. We have uh, bows uh, and, uh, and things uh, from, yeah, gifts from the ambassadors. Uh, less than in Bern and the government, but even uh, uh, in a local uh, level, we received all the gifts, when they are not corrupted, of course, and they don't. No, no they are not. OK, uh, towards the public, what is our mission? To educate. To educate. To inform, yeah. Fake news? <laughs> So, uh, to give the opportunity to see this object as much as possible, we are once again a public uh, from the Canton Museum. So, our mission is really to let the people who pay us with the taxes to see this object as much as possible. Therefore, we are free in Palais de Rumine. The entrance is free. Uh, education and delight, this is very important. It's part, there is an international uh, association of all the museums called the uh, ICOM, and there is a definition of was, what is a museum, and in the definition of the very serious ICOM, there is delight. A, mi a museum must to be de delightful. And to give the feeling to be welcome, doesn't matter who you are. It's really uh, one of the missions of, of the actual museums to say it's not only for educated people. People, as, as, as far as we can do it, but if people doesn't want to come, it's not a problem. But if they doesn't want to come because they believe that they are not educated enough or rich enough or whatever enough, to enter in our uh, institutions, we have to give them the feeling and to tell them, to, to say to them that you are welcome. Doesn't matter who you are, come. Uh, so it's a, a long list of our activities. Okay. Uh, to have the public, the public, uh, it's. Exhibition, uh, do you know what is cultural mediation? No. So more and more we have professionals that really uh, exp all the guided tours, all the things that you can do with somebody in a museum. It's people uh, whose mission is to, to explain science, to, vulg to make vulgarization toward the public. Uh, usually towards children, uh, really to, to explain more and to, to have a <laughs> human contact with, uh, with the public. And it fulfills also this mission to let feel pe people that, to make a, uh, an easier access to our exhibitions. And it's, it's called uh, scientific or cultural mediation. Uh, events, of course. Uh, we participate a lot in scientific research. Uh, the three museums of Palais de Rumine have uh, close contacts with the University of Lausanne and other uh, universities or academic um, institution. And, of course, education. Toward the objects, uh, it's uh, to collect, to restore, to, to deposit, to expertise. Uh, my colleague uh, arche from archaeology or history, they had a big, big, uh, a lot of uh, expertise uh, among the, um, the objects stolen in Syria or, or in Iraq. To, to make expertise to be sure that it was not, it, where does it come and if it's stolen. And as you know or not, uh, Switzerland is sheltering 
a lot of uh, archaeological objects uh, of countries in war. We are sheltering that during the war and giving back to the country after. So um, this is my colleagues, um, the, the, our archaeologists, uh, and this is uh, the archaeologists in museums are really uh, trained to do this. It's more than the university, the academics. The, it's really the, the people who, the, the curators of museum who do it. Uh, in uh, natural history, it's the same with, uh, with uh, insects or other animals, for example. Uh, we have somebody who is in charge with a uh, moustique tigre uh, to, to control how, how, it, how it comes, if we can prevent uh, his uh, dispersion and so on. Uh, so scientific research is quite important. Um, and uh, uh, exp expertise, excuse me, is quite important. And um, we have to choose the objects that will be precious uh, in uh, 200 years. And this is a big deal because how can we know what will be important uh, for the next generation? So for this, we also need the help of the public. Uh, it's also the public who tells us what, what will be Im so important. For example, uh, our, the, our history museum, is you have all the credit cards. There is a, a, a part of a Musée Monétaire, Monetary Museum, and they are collecting all the credit cards or all the um, ATM machines. So, so what is in the museum sometimes is surprising. Um, so exhibition, uh, yeah, I, I'm not sure I, am, I have something more to say <laughs> about this slide. So, um, we are making some, so this is uh, culture and mediation or scientific mediation. Uh, here, what you see is a workshop about ants. And we take the children and we, they are making a, a play role about being an ant. And what, uh, they are in a, how do you say, fourmier, in a hen house, <laughs> hen nest. And uh, there are several uh, roles and they pass from one to be, to be the guardian, to be the queen, to be the princess. But it's a way quite, uh, they play, they like it very much. Usually the bow, uh, the one with the bow and there are the, the prince and princesses have uh, wings. They like it very much. <laughs> uh, but it's okay, they play, but they also uh, learn about the organization of the end society. Uh, here, uh, above, uh, it was um, uh, during the night of the museum, we, we sold, uh, how do you say, enchère in English? Auction. Auction. We sold auction all our objects, and at the end, all the Palais de Rumine. And uh, it was this man who made it. <laughs> but it was also, and it was okay, it was funny and ha ha ha, but it was also uh, a way to show the public why an object is precious. Because if you sell it, you have to explain its history and, and blah blah blah. And it was uh, 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 a way to show how we decide uh, why we collect or not an object. So scientific research, um, <coughs> I told you, yeah, uh, for example, our, my colleagues of the Museum of Geology, they are making big research on uh, uranium or mammoth. Uh, we can speak after about disinfection and if we can bring mammoths back to life. <laughs> we can. 
And we have a lot of researchers and students in our laboratories and collections. It's part of our job too, to welcome people. For example, uh, uh, now in zoology, we have two Thai students and one Israeli. In archaeology, they have also two or three, I don't remember. And I think in geology, they have none for the moment. But we have people all around the year. Education. Um, so, for example, we participate, we are partners in a project of participatory science, Operation Fourmi, which aims, so I will show you, it's better. Uh, I need your help, yes. I'm sorry. <laughs> La myrmécologie, c'est quoi C'est la science qui étudie les fourmis. D'ailleurs, elles intriguent les scientifiques vaudois depuis plus de 150 ans. Vous connaissez les reines et les ouvrières, mais les spécialistes pourraient vous expliquer qu'il existe des fourmis esclavagistes, des fourmis bergères, des grandes fourmis de 2 cm, des toutes petites de 3 mm. 140 espèces sont présentes en Suisse. Pourtant, ces fourmis restent mystérieuses. Personne ne connaît exactement les espèces qui se trouvent dans le canton de Vaud, ni où elles habitent. Vous pouvez aujourd'hui aider les chercheurs à les découvrir et participer au premier recensement des fourmis vaudoises. Rien de plus simple, il suffit d'un tube de collecte et d'un peu de dextérité. Identifier le nombre d'espèces et leur localisation permettra d'améliorer notre connaissance des écosystèmes et de la biodiversité du canton. C'est possible grâce à la collecte de nombreuses données. Ce projet ne peut exister sans vous, alors devenez Myrmécologue. Commandez votre kit de chercheurs, l'opération Fourmi est lancée. Rejoignez-nous. So, uh, for example, we participate in this uh, project and uh, the aim, it works quite well. Uh, there, are, there, there are not enough tubes for all the wishes and all the people who send them. But if you want to participate, please, and uh, you can take the ends of your kitchen, balcony, garden, uh, whatever you want. But uh, it's also a way for us to be in contact with the public. And uh, this uh, project aims also to preserve biodiversity, to all these ants will end in the collections of our museum. So we will have uh, a picture of what is the situation of ants in Canton de Vaux in uh, uh, 2019. So in 200 years, scientific can, can know if there were changes, changes or not. Hmm? For the future, uh, for the moment, we don't know what will happen with Paladrumin. All the all the politicians, all the journalists, everybody is looking for Platform 10, the new beautiful museum. It is, it will be something really uh, great. But what will we do with Palais de, the old Palais de Rubin? Uh, so we are in a transition uh, period, so everything is open for the moment. As far as we know, and we know uh, not so much, we will stay. There will not, there will not, uh, there will not be another institution. <laughs> so we we'll stay the uh, Natural Science and History Museum as well as the library and continue to share the spaces. And um, we aim to make uh, common exhibitions in the in the rooms of the Museum of Fine Arts. So we aim to make really a palais des savoirs huh? and to mix the different fields of science and to make common exhibition as we, we did uh, last year with Cosmos, if somebody sees it, or with the Ai Weiwei in a different way. But we really, and we see that the public uh, is also interested of this mix of different fields. And also for us, it's more interesting to, if you make an exhibition, it's, uh, it makes it more interesting if you can uh, mix uh, these different fields and not make uh, just geology or just zoology. The, the, the fact, so you can see um, 
a topic on different ways, from different manners. Uh, it's also more, creati more creative and more interesting. We'll begin with the event uh, Museum Mix. I will show you something about this and continue with uh, two big common exhibition, an exotic Swiss uh, next year. This uh, exhibition is um, uh, a partnership with uh, two professors of the uh, University of, of Berne, who has made a big uh, uh, national fund project on this topic, and uh, the exhibition is the result of this research. It will be an, uh, what is exotic uh, abroad for the Swiss people, and also how Swiss can be the Switzerland can be exotic for others. <laughs> so welcome in uh, next year. And uh, in uh, 2021, uh, something about cold. What is cold in all our fields? So Museomics, uh, you are exactly the people targeted by Museomics. <laughs> so I will show you what it is. We have five minutes, is it okay? Yeah. <laughs> Voilà, bienvenue dans ce Muséo Mix euh, 2016. Alors, alors, on va commencer par le premier thème qui s'appelle les montages. Deuxième thème, les temps modernes. Ensuite, sixième sens des Romains. Sous les pavés, la vie. Et ensuite, nous avons à vos assiettes. Le thème global, c'est interdit aux parents. C'est parti C'est vraiment une rencontre. Et puis tout se mélange. C'est vraiment, vraiment cool. C'est un truc génial pour partager et apprendre plein de choses. Et on est au max. Et ça sort comme ça sort. Je pense qu'il va y avoir une belle synergie. L'idée, c'est de porter des lunettes de réalité augmentée avec une plaque chauffante sous les pieds et de se retrouver dans les termes romaines. Donc on propose une interface sur laquelle le visiteur pourra monter son propre film. On va fabriquer une animation qui va apporter un certain nombre de projections d'images, de bruitages pour interagir avec les visiteurs. Alors le but de notre projet, c'est de faire un parcours libre dans la vieille ville de Nyon pour permettre aux gens en fait, de découvrir euh, la ville romaine d'autrefois. Muséomix, deuxième jour. L'objectif du jour, eh c'est d'arriver jusqu'au crash test déjà à 16h et c'est également de pouvoir à 18h faire une présentation du prototype et de pouvoir l'expliquer clairement en plénière. Prête à enchaîner la journée. Curieuse et impatiente. Motivée. Tout est possible, tout je sais pas, mais presque. En tout cas pour l'instant, oui. D'accord, donc euh, sous la structure, passe à travers les pores du mortier et ça devient le chauffage au sol. Eh ouais. C'est l'heure du crash test. Alors en fait, il faut aider Arlette la chouette qui a perdu ses petits. Ouais. Donc euh, on va aller au grenier. Qui veut avoir la lampe magique Moi. Moi. Bon. <rire> On a déjà un truc là pour César, qu'on a filmé ce matin. Et déjà un petit résultat, un sneak preview on dit. Non, ça je... euh, moi j'ai de confiance pour ça. Affaire à suivre. Mais c'est eu... C'est le dernier jour, objectif, présentation des prototypes. On est en train de finaliser quelques points et tout à l'heure on va aller au musée du Léman, finir les scénarios. Le projet avance bien. Il y aura des petits codes comme ça qui seront cachés sous les outils. Et le visiteur il doit venir chercher quel est le bon outil pour pouvoir accéder à la vidéo. Alors la tension commence un peu à monter. Ça fonctionnera, ça ira, ça sera super. 
ça s'organise bien, c'est assez fluide. Euh, maintenant, ce qui reste vraiment à préparer, c'est le socle de présentation où les gens vont vraiment pouvoir monter. Mais il faut qu'on soit synchronisés. Ah, hein. On a dû faire face à quelques problèmes techniques, euh, comme je pense tous les groupes. Donc, Mais euh... on est vraiment dans les temps quand même. On est super <rire> dans les temps. Que vous êtes lourde Admirez-vous au grand jour. Voilà, il est 16h, il est l'heure pour le public de découvrir les prototypes du Muséo Mix à Nyon. Alors, je vous propose, si vous avez envie, on a une activité faite spécialement pour les enfants. C'est même interdit aux parents, normalement. Et du coup, grâce à ça, eh ben, la chouette, on, nous, maintenant, on pourra voir aussi comme voit la chouette. Le toit Ouais Le toit Allez, on va au grenier C'est vraiment super, euh, les enfants adorent, ils se, mar ils se marrent bien. Euh, on n'a que des retours positifs, donc c'est vraiment génial. On fait parler la porcelaine, elle s'exprime. On est assez content que cette borne fonctionne. Je suis assez fière. Ouais. Ça se passe très très bien. Fier de notre travail, ouais, vraiment. Euh, C'est bon, tout est oublié, tout va bien, les gens sont impressionnés, on a des bons retours. C'est super. Alors écoute, tu es dans la colonie que moi, et je suis là, j'ai décidé de brocher. Les gens sont là, donc euh, on est content. Quand on met le masque, bah, après on voit plus. Enfin, tous les gens qui sont autour, eh ben, dès qu'on met le masque, bah, après on ne voit plus rien et puis on voit juste devant nous la personne qui nous parle. C'était cool. On a des retours super positifs. C'est super chouette. So, uh, did you hear about Museum Mix before? No. So, Museum Mix is, um, is an event. Uh, exist since six or seven years in uh, different countries every year. It's an event, three days, collaborati collaborative works. Uh, it's like a hackathon in museums. And the, the goal is to make um, prototypes of uh, uh, cultural mediation with Uh, new te technology uh, tools, and it's really uh, so. It's volunteers who come uh, three days during a weekend in a museum, and it, it's a really a hackathon to make prototypes uh, with the theme of the museum. It's um, it's a way for all the creative people to have this experiment once, and uh, the goal is also to make something new and to have a, a completely different atmosphere in museums who are normally very serious and scientific. So uh, um, we organize, as, as I told you, uh, we, are, we are in a transition phase. So we organize the next museum, the next Swiss museum mix in Palais de Rumine in November. You are very welcome. And if you want to know more, we are making up a remix to explain what it is. And the next one is uh, on 13th of June. And welcome if you want to come and to see what it is and to, to meet the people. So we are, uh, you, can, um, you can also go to museumix.ch and to see, uh, to have more explanations or museumix.org, uh, I guess. Uh, the, The, uh, the, the world platform of all the museum mix because it's done in, is, uh, in a lot of countries to see what is the, the principle. But uh, we will be very lucky uh, if you want to participate and um, we need people like you. Thank it's you okay? Very much. <laughs>